wow, hello, wow. Oh, I can see myself, this is quite cool. Oh, oh, this is quite exciting. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Kimberly, how are you? Hello, I've got everything set up and ready. Come and join, come on, join on in. Hello, hello. Oh, we're getting quite a few people in, that's quite exciting. Hello for anybody who has never seen me before. My name's Mary. I am the daughter of Yvonne Fondling and Carl Boutois. So yeah, it's quite exciting. Oh, hello, hello Gemma, how are you? Oh, <laughs> I can hear myself. Say hello parents. Hello. hello. They're here just to say hello. <laughs> hello and welcome to Witchcraft Wednesdays. Nice alliteration, I know. Everybody's saying hello. Oh, it's so sweet, everybody's here. That's very lovely. Uh, so yeah, this is quite nice. I wasn't expecting to do this, but why not? Why not? Now, for those who don't really know what's going on or if they're getting uh, any, sort of, um, any sort of notifications that we've gone live, Hello, welcome to Witchcraft Wednesdays. Hi, Mary Beattie, I'm going through a bit of a journey. Um, I've decided that um, I want to start practicing uh, the ancient craft of witchcraft, which is marvellous and I'm very excited to do it. Um, hello everybody, everybody's saying hello, 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 hello. Um, but to begin, I wanted to say thank you all for joining. This is really, really lovely. Um, so when it comes to witchcraft, I'm quite new to it. I'm still learning everything that I need to do. Um, this is going to kind of be a weekly thing. So if you want to join on in and, and watch and follow along, then fantastic. I can't wait. I do have my parents looking quite proud over in the corner over there. Hello. So yeah, they're quite over here. Hello, everybody saying, oh, it's so lovely to feel a bit joined in with. Um, well, to begin, um, I have a bit of a setup here. I've got my crystals. Um, I have a nice little time turner over here as well. All my candles are set up quite nice. And of course, monster. Lovely. But um, to begin, I thought I'd talk about some of my favourite sort of things that maybe got me into doing this. Um, I kind of discovered witchcraft. I knew that it existed, modern day witchcraft, um, from just bits and bobs. It was mostly the internet that I discovered it from. I've heard people, you know, talking about it a lot as well. Um, but it was a lot with the internet that I kind of found out. I saw videos of people doing it. I saw a lot of um, vloggers saying what they were going to do during the day. And that's when I kind of thought, this is really interesting. I really want to do something like this. Um, so then I said to my parents, this sounds really, really cool. Can I get involved? And uh, they were like, hell yeah, that sounds really, really cool. So they've been awesome. You've been awesome. I love you. Love you too. We love you too, thingy. <laughs> you see? Um, so to begin this, first off, I got this book, which is called Enchanted, and it is by the wonderful Tatinia Hardy, who is an amazing person. I've read most of this, um, and her insight to um, uh, white witchcraft and witchcraft in general is something that is just amazing to me, and it has really opened um, this sort of like world and this book to me, and it, it means a lot because suddenly I've discovered this sort of different society and different meanings behind things and it and it genuinely has kind of, I don't know, it's primed my day to sort of like discover something in depth that I haven't discovered before. Sean Brooking is asking, is it witchcraft or wicca you're doing, Mary? Just witchcraft at the moment. Um, witchcraft in itself is known to be more of a practice rather than a religion. Um, and I kind of want to start working on the craft itself and then who knows along the way I might turn around and say hey um Wicca or being a pagan or something like that that might be interesting along the way but at the moment it's just witchcraft that I am dealing with at the moment there are other people saying that um uh, that's this is what they would like to do as well so they could join their journey with you oh fantastic I think um a lot of people can be put off by witchcraft a lot of the time because they see so many people doing it and they are so advanced and they are so um that they, they seem to know everything if that makes sense so i think it's quite nice to be able to share a little bit of a beginner's journey um into how it all works out which is really lovely and i really and i really can't wait to start it all start it all and my little journey and adventure with you guys so yeah this is this is a nice little beginning it's it's a beginning in a strange world that we're living in right now 
But um, I think that since discovering this, it's given me a newfound appreciation for nature, for summer, for flowers, for everything to do with the seasons. Um, I think it's given me a whole new meaning towards what life is about, weirdly enough. Um, William, William is asking, uh, well he's saying learn to uh, align your chakras first and now you, were, yeah. you, you talk about a little bit of how you're going to do meditation and how important it is. Oh god Joe, that, that's the first thing that most people said was um, about meditation um, and that was one of the most important things that you can do um, and I completely agree with that. I think that with meditation you can centre yourself, you begin to understand that you as your own person have your own energy inside of you. Um, and by realising how to focus that energy to focus on yourself and give yourself a lot of peace and calm, um, I think that that really helps a journey um, and making sure that you begin to understand the energy that surrounds you, surrounds your friends, your family. Centering yourself is something that is very important because if you don't centre yourself, you don't understand yourself. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, think, I think meditation is one of the most important things you can do Adam, to begin with. Adam Didcot is saying, isn't witchcraft um, evil? No, it is not evil. I think that a lot of myths have made it evil. Um, a lot of people are scared of things that they don't understand. Um, a lot of people don't understand that modern witchcraft um, in itself... It, is based off of worshipping nature, it's based off of creating and um, using the planet as a source for um, healing and protection. Um, obviously there are sides of everything that can be um, made to be negative. Um, a lot of people believe that most witches will hex you or they will send something your way, um, but most witches they, they know about how the rule of three works, which is if you do something positive, it will come back to you three times. You do something negative, it will come back to you three times as well. Um, so no, I don't believe that witchcraft is evil unless you intend to use it that way. Um, it's like anything, anything, a candle can be used to bring light into a house. However, it can also be used to burn a house down. Um, so it's, it's like anything, um, so yeah. Rachel Woodburn has asked, what's the difference between ancient witchcraft and modern witchcraft, or is there a difference? Um, I think when it comes to modern witchcraft, it's based off um, traditional witchcraft. Um, I keep on saying witchcraft and witchcraft. <laughs> keep on going between northern and southern. Um, when it southern comes to... Right. <laughs> um, with the ancient craft and what they practiced that was during um, an older amount of time which is why it was so rural um, so heavily based in nature and we have worked with that uh, modern witchcraft I believe is more um, approving to what we do now for example we don't need to go out and uh, bask in the moon 24 7 you don't need to do that. You can uh, set an alarm on your phone. You can go out to, you can find out where um, the, the next nearest moon is on your phone. There's a lot of things that make it easier. Um, but once again, like anything at the very beginning, not a lot of people understand it. And I think that with modern witchcraft, we are able to adapt. We are able to learn from previous mistakes, from previous lessons. And I think that's amazing. So yeah. Um, Happy days. It, it's it's Watty is asking. Are there any books on witchcraft that you could recommend? I mean, Titania's book that you've got. There yes, is really interesting. this is my favourite book. Uh, you can't really read it because it's probably mirrored, but it is called Enchanted. It is amazing. This was kind of the thing that made me realise that this is something I really wanted to get into. Um, and in it, it explains a lot about white magic. It explains uh, a lot of spells. Um, but mostly I'm taking it step by step, making sure I can understand all the terminology first. Um, so yeah, and it... What's, your, what's one of your favourite spells in the book that you could... Ooh, my favourite spells in this book. There's a lot on oils, however, if you wanted to do something that was without sort of, you know, uh, you needing anything, there is one in here that speaks about um, how to use your energy inside of you to have a positive night's sleep. Um, to generally go about your day and attract positive a positivity to you. Because um, a lot of witchcraft is based off the law of attraction. You believe and you will get. The more happier you are, the more happiness you will have. Uh, the more negativity, the more negativity you will get. Someone's asked, have you tried a spell yet? But, but before you do it, 
to tell people your journey of going to get your oh. the wand and going in for the water and, and asking permission because I think that's very interesting. I think um, a lot of people don't. Us as humans, we can be quite blind to nature, and I think that we will go around without even thinking that there is another living being in front of us when in fact that could be a flower, a tree. Um, and once realising that, I decided that was going to be part of my journey from... Um, stop making silly faces! <laughs> um, but from, um, from my journey, I began by realising that nature has energy inside of it. I began by realising that the trees, the grass that you walk on, everything, the wood that has uh, that's built inside a building is filled with energy and... What I began to realise was, well, if I'm going to take this seriously and I want to become this journey, I need to kind of, it sounds really weird, but be one with nature. Um, so by going into, we, we have a lovely little sort of woodsy area um, that is just uh, by our garden. And by going into there, I walked around and I just appreciated nature. Um, one of the things that uh, Titania also talks about in here is going to find your wand or elements that you want to bring into your life to help you through the craft, um, which is mostly um, talking about wands and bits of stone and stuff like that. Asking permission to take something from something that has energy is like asking my mum if I could please have a sip of her wine. No. <laughs> I wouldn't just go over there and steal it, I would ask um, for it, which is the same thing <laughs> as, uh, which is the same thing as what you would do with a tree, anything else. If you want to take something from another living being, you have to ask permission, which is something that I love to do. I, 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 I found that very empowering to be able to, it sounds weird to say, communicate with trees but just be able to have that communication from my side at least so yeah it's quite exciting uh, Rebecca Bourdain's is asking I love this do you use crystals at all um right now well <laughs> I actually have a few crystals but they aren't mine they are my mother's um this is amethyst um and that is probably one of the best stones any beginner can use amethyst is used for protection and positivity um, but slowly my, my collection of things will begin to rise, hopefully. Um, but at the moment, my own crystals are on the horizon, hopefully cross the fingers. But I'm more focusing on um, natural things. Uh, not a lot of people realise this, but you don't have to have certain things to become a witch. You don't have to have five blue candles and one black. You can have the bare minimum and still be able to practice the craft. Um, for example, not a lot of people know, but a simple stone that calls out to you that you might just spot in your garden and think it's really nice, that can also be used as a crystal. Um, when it comes to candles, a lot of people say you need certain type of um, colours, uh, coloured candles to do certain things, which is true. However, however um, you can replace any candle with a white candle um, and any herb can be replaced by a rosemary. So it's it's... It's just a really interesting community that you find all this sort of stuff out in. Now, Andrew Turville is asking, do you wash them under the moonlight to cleanse? Yes. Um, I've, my, it's one of those moments where I have been preparing a certain ingredient, I should say, um, that has been left out to make sure that um, it gets proper sunshine and moonlight. Um, but a lot of people realise that rainwater, uh, you collect rainwater, you charge that in the moonlight, you can do the same with crystals, it gives it more property, it gives it more um, energy, as it were. So yeah, it's amazing. Um, you mentioned about it, you know intentions and Debbie, uh, Debbie Bumblebee is saying you can use anything in spells, it's your intention that makes it work. Things just aid your concentration, which is what you were talking about at the, at the beginning. Also, a lot of people are asking about you know, um, uh, are there spells to uh, get rid of somebody in your life? Are there spells for positivity? Are there, uh, uh, you know, different spells to enrich your life for good or, or, or better? Or um, a lot of spells can be used to attract certain things. For example, if you want to attract wealth, you can cast a spell to do that. However, it's very difficult to say how you want to attract that wealth. For example, if you really wanted to attract that wealth through winning the lottery, it's very difficult to 
uh, give the reason why, as it were. You could do a spell to attract positivity. However, all of a sudden, if a very strange friend that seems a bit negative walks out your life, that might bring positivity. But you won't realise it at the time. Um, lots of spells can be cast for different things. Um, however, most spells can come with, not a backlash, I wouldn't say, but some spells can hit you with um, things that you don't necessarily think is going to happen. So, yeah, there's a lot of different ones. Karen Patton is asking, are incense sticks used for, um, for witchcraft and uh, what do you use them for? Yes, incense is. Um, you use them to cleanse objects, um, different scents, different colours can have different meanings. Um, so most of the incense that you can use, you can use that with candles, you can use that with... Um, your crystals, you can use that with anything that your heart's desire, even if it's your favourite book, your film, whatever you want, incense can carry certain elements to help you um, with your blossoming of certain items, I should say. Um, but no, I think it, incense is very, how can I say, um, it's not a necessity, but as in it does help a lot. We've got a couple, I'm going to give you a couple of questions here. We've got... Um... One person is asking, uh, can you uh, use a spell to put a curse on someone and someone else? And Jenny's asking, is there a spell to help you find love? Now, she's done that in capitals. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's shouting it! So can, you, can you use a spell for a curse and can you find love? Help me find love! Love! Please! <laughs> love. Please! Love, please, love! Um, for cursing, you can technically curse somebody or you can hex somebody. However, the problem is with that is that if you do something negative to somebody, it will come back to you three times as bad, which is why people don't, well, as in I would never consider it. Um, when you think about cursing somebody, you could be cursing them for a lifetime of pain, suffering, or you could be cursing them so that their satellite dish slightly moves. You don't know what you're doing. Um, but it, it, it's a difficult one because a lot of people can ignore that. However, hexing someone is bringing negativity onto someone else's life. And like the rules of karma, it will come back to you. Uh, and as for love, yes, you can do that, Jenny. Yes, you can. I've researched it already. Your single girl over here has researched it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so as in you can have spells to um, attract, um, not a, I'd say a soulmate almost, or you can attract more positive um, feelings into your life, or even attract love, which also in this book, it speaks about attracting wealth, love, and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I love this so much as well. That's why I got the idea. So yeah. I did see a comment before, I'm not sure who it was from, but it asked if men can be witches. Yes, I saw that. Um, yes, you can. Um, a lot of people argue over this subject from what I've seen. Um, men can be witches. It does not mean that you are a wizard or a warlock. You are just a witch. A witch is not, um, you know, a witch isn't just women. It can be men and women. It can be anything. Um, to do with you know however you identify yourself but if you want to be a witch you don't have to be a woman zoe culverwell says how can we keep negativity away um a lot of positivity um positive spells um should, should i get my i forgot to get my positive my 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 spell yeah do you mind grabbing it for me um i actually did one of my first ever spells was creating a positive household oh. um which is what i did uh, before which my pa is just about to get yeah because before this it was all falling apart yeah so this is a house positivity spell it doesn't look like much but it is um you can bring positivity into your life um so when it comes to uh like we said the law of attraction in a sense you can attract positivity into your life um you can constantly hope to find positive people and that can I'm just saying, just show everybody a bit, oh, a bit more. A bit more. And tell what, everybody what, go you, like this? What, what you did to do that, because it's very interesting, I think. This is a combination of crushed eggshells that have been uh, de-skinned from the inside, I should say. Um, it has uh, cinnamon and basil in it um, with wax on the top to seal it all together. Um, now, obviously, you can't just throw certain ingredients together and hope it can work. You do need to kind of charge certain things, which are... Um, you know, so, you know, charge certain things which are quite 
interesting to do. Um, a lot of people don't understand the charging aspect. They often think it's a little bit stupid or a bit ridiculous. Um, what but, does it mean? What do you do? Uh, when it comes to enchanting, you are asking your personal energy to go into something and make it to what you want. For example, with this, I made myself open, I meditated almost, I got myself into a meditative state, and then you focus on your own energy, you draw on the thing of nature that we were talking about before, the energy that that has in it, and you pour the positivity um, into here, which therefore charges it and makes it into a spell. So there you go. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm making it sound very, very easy <laughs> when it's not It's not um, something that you can do in five minutes. Um, but honestly, as in when you begin to realise that it's not just about sprinkling a few things together and saying some magical words, that you, have to, you actually have to use something from yourself, you feel it, that's when you can go, ooh, I'm getting this now. Jamila Jackson is saying, can you get this stuff from Holland and Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> you can get um, a lot of stuff that you need from your simple pound shop, you can find it in your supermarkets, um, even the dried herbs that you can get, you can get those wherever you want. There isn't a select place that you have to go and get things from. If you wanna go to Holland and Barrett, awesome, yeah, go with that one. Um, but uh, no, as in, I, I mostly went around my own grocery shop and uh, dug them out myself. So that was that, which was quite, Quite, quite nice to know that you can get it from anywhere, which is nice. We've been asked, um, Rachel Glynn has asked, um, do you have a wand? I do. <laughs> I do indeed. And this is what we're talking about when it comes to permission. I asked the tree to take permission for um, this, this, this branch that caught my eye. And um, although it sounds ridiculous, sometimes feeling a connection to something um, that comes from nature, you know, you, you, you can use that. Um, although I'm... Wands aren't what Harry Potter makes them to be. You don't waggle them around and say magical words and sparks come shooting out of them. It, they are simply a tool to be used in the same that, you know, a, 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 I don't know, a hammer is used in a workshop. There's saws and other stuff there, but you can use everything else, which is amazing. Lots of people are asked, well, in, uh, have asked, um, do you need a familiar in, 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 in using today's witchcraft and do you have one if you don't which one would you which animal would you like um i do not have a familiar um i don't think that you need one either um like i said it, it's it's more based on yourself it's more based on your own sort of like energy you don't need something else to be there for you however a familiar can help you um in certain things and also the energy of a living being can also help especially if they're willing if i could have any familiar it would have to be like a crow or a raven or something really really cool and quite emo -y. Can I grab Hey, parents? No. Can I please have a read? Maggie Morris no. is asking, um, <laughs> what can she use for anxiety, please? Um, amethyst is really, really good for positive mental attitude. Um, obviously, if you get a big chunk like this, it probably won't help. But what you can do is you can seal amethyst into a jar, maybe something smaller. Uh, one of those vials would do that's around that big. If you get some amethyst, put that in there and just carry it around with you. That is said to bring positive vibes to you. So like a necklace? You yes, can you could have an amethyst necklace. You could have... The thing is with um, a lot of crystals and stuff, they already have um, a lot of attention to your feelings and emotions. If you want to have positivity, it's very easy. Amethyst, I would say, is probably one of my favourites to dive into that little subject with. So yeah, it's quite fun. I do like a bit of amethyst. Doesn't ever... Anybody else? Mm. No, obviously, you're, you're, you're starting your journey and there's lots of mm. questions coming up which you won't be able to answer yeah. just yet, but you will in time. Mm. But um, Alex is asking, um, he has chronic pain. Is there something that can help um, him with that? He's wheelchair bound and he's in constant pain. Is there something you know about now or is that something that you have to look at in the future? I think when it comes to uh, a lot of pain related things, there's only so much people can do about it. Um, especially from what I know anyway. Once again, I'm just a beginner in this. I, if, if I, I don't know everything about it um, at all. I'm very much a newbie to all this sort of stuff. But when it comes to pain related, um, you can search up on a lot of charged objects to help you get through it. You can um, go through a lot of crystals. Meditation might also help. Um, being able to go through your energies. But like I said, that is something I haven't touched upon yet. Um, I've mostly just been practicing positivity spells and bringing positive vibes. So that's that's the main thing that I'm focusing on. I'm taking it baby steps, baby steps. So yeah.
Apparently, um, Rebecca Burdains is saying she's in a wheelchair and malachite is amazing if you want to try that in meditation. So there you go, malachite. There we Something go. That we're, this is what, this is what, sorry, this is great because you're learning together, aren't you? Yeah, this is, this is, this is the whole thing is that this is kind of what um, I wanted it to be was me going through a journey and you guys joining me and hopefully if there's anybody that, that wants to join with me or there's anybody going through the same thing, we can learn from each other. Like I said, I don't know everything, so I'd love to learn and learn and learn more about what I'm doing. I want to learn more little facts, more little more little tricks, everything like that, which would be amazing. Um, well, Karen, Karen Fisher is just saying that you're doing brilliantly. Oh, well, well, thank um, you. <laughs> also, um, which is quite interesting, where did it go? Uh, she was wearing a ring, very interesting. Oh yes, I wear a lab, uh, Rebecca Bakewell says, I wear a lab redite ring, if I've said that correctly, as a protection against negativity and is supposed to help with psychic ability and magical ability. So labradite, so as you, labradorite, sorry. Um, so you were right, Mary, there's, there's an awful lot to do with crystals and, oh, and gotcha. stones, aren't there? But isn't the thing is, I know you touched on earlier, but the whole thing about all of this, uh, even with the colour of the candles and everything, it's about your intention, isn't mm. it? It's about how much you believe in it. Oh, gotcha. As in, if you, if you, for example, with this, if I, if I made all of this, and even if I charged it, but I didn't have a hundred percent belief that it was going to work, this would not work at all. As in, it's, it's the whole point of believing in what you do has a an outcome. Um, that is what you want it to be. Um, by having intention to do something, if you fully believe, fully, fully, fully believe, and you put all of your energy into believing that whatever you use um, will bring out a certain outcome, that will happen. It, it's it's amazing. It is fantastic. For example, with this, I fully believe that will bring positivity to the holder. Um, and that is a lot about what witchcraft stands for. It's the belief. It's the belief mechanism mechanism of believing positively believing on what you want to happen um so yeah absolutely absolutely Yvonne Fortune is saying what's your ultimate goal in this journey Mary um I'd like to teach myself um to be not only a better person but also to appreciate more about life I think that recently I've just been swimming through days just sort of you know waiting to go to bed to wake up for the same day to kind of happen again but then when you realize hang on a minute um, every single time that you wake up and there's sunshine on your face, that is a day worth kind of exploring and, and, and going out and at least basking in the sun to, to, to acknowledge that you are alive <laughs> in a sense. Um, but I'd want to learn so much that I'm confident in being able to battle insecurities whilst going into this. Because that's something nobody really wants to talk about is that some people who come into this, and I've seen it quite a few in various videos, people are nervous when they first begin they're nervous of messing up and being critiqued by others because they are so new to this whilst you know others who are really really in deep and they know a lot of stuff um you know i think i think helping each other is goes a long way so yeah i'd like to help people <laughs> well rosie is saying your your positivity is inspiring oh thank you rosie that's really lovely try to be positive it's always nice to be positive, especially when you think that there's something around the corner or, um, or or if you're in a negative situation, sometimes just putting a smile on your face and being positive can change your entire day. And I think that that is probably one of the best things that somebody can do um, is be positive, be positive, um, because it can change your entire mood. It can change your day. It's amazing. You've been asked, do you have a favourite stone? Oh, that's a really good point. Um, I was born in October, um, so my twelfth of October. So my birth, my birthstone is an opal. So I, I've always loved that. But I also remember, ironically, I used to have this shard of amethyst I got when I was at the beach with my nan. So I love amethyst because I just love the I love the colour of the purple and the shards that come up from it. And I always used to think it was magical as a child. So hey, <laughs> if I could only tell her now what I was doing. <laughs> so yeah. Um, no, I think I think opal or amethyst. Amethyst is very positive, so I like that one. Fantastic. And when people want to know what the book is again, if you can just read out the title. Enchanted. It's fantastic. It says enchant, but also it has kind of like a silent E D over Titania, there. Um, and it's Titania, where's she gone? Right at the very front. Titania Hardy. 
So yeah, I know you can't really read that, but just say Titania Hardy. It's just beautifully right there. put together. It isn't is it? fantastic. Look at that. Look, look at that photography just there. It is fantastic. But even there are even sort of things talking about how to go into um, other realms, how to um, go into love. Oh, Jenny, this is a good one. Surround yourself by water as well, because that that does attract love. There you go. You see, you see, revision is paying off. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, no, this is a fantastic book. I do recommend it. It is amazing. So, and it, it, it says underneath over here, so you'll know, Titania's Book of White Magic. Um, so that is the right one. And it's got a nice velvety cover as well. Um, but also another thing that I thought was quite interesting was that um, I read online that it is very important to kind of map your journey. So already I've kind of began my own little sort of like diary, little notebooks and everything like that. Um, to make sure that I'm kind of paving my way and making sure I can look back on when I first began and go, hey, look at me, look at me now, that's awesome. Um, Jay, uh, where's it gone? Hayley is saying, this is brilliant, Mary, can you tell us more about how the moon is used in witchcraft? From what you know already. Uh, from, like I said, I'm very, very new to this, so there's only a limited amount of knowledge that I know, but um, the moon is seen as to be giving um, light that energises certain things, which is why we always say, well, not we always say, but which is why it is said to charge rainwater, moon water is what we call it, um, because it gives magical properties. Um, the moon in itself can be represented in various religions by various gods, um, even in Greek mythology to Egyptian mythology, the moon has always been re represented by something that is giving in kind. Um, so that is why we look up to the moon so much. And also with the moon, it kind of represents, um, you know, light in a dark situation. And by getting that energy from the moon, um, you can perform really light and positive spells. So, yeah, that's what I know so far. So please don't shout at me if I've got something wrong. Um, Larkley is saying, it's a new moon tonight. Make your intentions clear to our Lady Moon. Perfect time to start new things. There you go. You see? Oh, also, if you don't know, it's really, really good. There is an app. If you've got an iPhone, I don't know if they have it on other things, that actually shows you when the new moons are appearing and stuff like that. So if you want to have a look at that, go and look for a moon generator. And someone asks, has asked, do you have a witch's name yet? No, that is something I think needs great care and precision because a witch's name kind of ties her or him to their craft. So I want to make sure that I know the basics first before I dive into the really serious stuff. Because there's, you see some people, um, they, they, they discover witchcraft and in the next few days they are suddenly worshipping everything. They've got five billion stones, five billion candles. They start, you know, I kind of want to take it slow at my own pace. Um, so yeah, and it, it, it's, it's it take your time with it. And uh, that's what I'm doing when it comes to the names and also just figuring out where I stand on the religious spectrum of things as well. Andrea Benson is saying, get yourself a book of shadows for your favourite spells and working with crystals as well. Yeah, I've heard about a book of shadows as well, so that I know what I'm getting. Oh, that sounds good. We might have to order that. Oh, yes. O o online. Um, uh, and so what sort of spells are you looking forward to doing? That's a question from me, your mama. mama. Um, protective spells, protective spells, positivity spells. I know I've mentioned them so much, but a lot of people, I think um, a lot of people can go through some pretty negative days sometimes. And I think by just having what people would see as a jar of dirt um, with them, they will know the true intention of that and it might make their day nicer. Um, and especially if they wholehearted believe in it, um, then positivity will come their way. But also love. I think that bringing love into places. There was one spell that I did very recently to bring um, friends back into my life to have a bigger circle of friends. And in the last few days, I've made contact with six or seven people that I haven't spoken to in years uh, from high school. And that's been lovely. So I've really enjoyed that as well. Um, but no, as in, I, I love all that sort of stuff, as in positivity, friendship, love, yeah, protection. And they're saying, um, somebody's, Debbie's saying that um, your notebook is already your book of shadows, it's your grimoire. Yeah, so see, that's the thing is, is I just can't wait to fill this up and make all, I know this sounds weird, but make all the page a bit crim crinkly with use and, and, and fill it up with really lovely things. Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous for when I have to go and buy a new one <laughs> when I've filled it all up as well. 
Um, but no, I did actually write in here um, uh, some bits and bobs. Um, so if you guys wanted to join in and start, you know, the whole journey of becoming a witch, um, it does take a lot of research, which is what I've kind of bullet, bullet pointed here. Uh, the first thing any kind of witch should know is witchcraft and its meaning. Um, and then also going into witch types, researching, all that sort of stuff. You don't have to make up your mind if you are um, going through and researching. You don't have to make up your mind what witch you are just by reading something. Um, also research into candles, herbs, crystals, all that sort of stuff. Um, and different paths. Um, and also to be able to learn to see... Uh, biases in books because a lot of books they can and also internet videos um, uh, articles um, can be very biased either for a certain witch type or against somebody so go for it what are you doing <laughs> I'm talking seriously <laughs> they've, they've, they've gone all shy now Go on, sorry, darling. Your dad's <laughs> messing around and put you off. <laughs> no, but honestly, I think um, overall, I'm just excited for learning a bit of the craft. I think we have to get you another book, though, don't we, really? That diary. I think you need a little, something a little bit more... Leather-bound. Leather-bound, I'm thinking. I think th this is the thing, is that that's what I thought, but then at the end of the day, I thought, well, I can write what I want in there. I mean, I know it's not aesthetically pleasing, but, like... Yes, but I think most people, are, even some people have said, they're, they're talking amongst themselves, going, oh, there's some nice... There's some nice... <laughs> paper chase. Have I just, have I just like, like, adopted loads of aunts yeah. and uncles who oh, are going, like... Who can play at that is saying, do you have a cape? No. Oh, actually, no, I do somewhere. Like, what? Do you remember? Right, bit yeah, of a flashback yeah, to the past. I pack. think we probably found that that's in the bin. No, do you, do you remember when I was, like, like seven or something, yes. and I went on Most Haunted Life, and I came down in a purple cape? Yes, I remember. Down the aisle. Well. Yeah, we remember it very well. So, yeah, no, I do have a cape somewhere. <laughs> um... But no, it's, in, it's all exciting. I feel quite loved right now. Oh, well, you're getting a lot right. of love, darling. Phyllis is asking, have you got a mentor for advice? Um, a mentor I mean, for to be advice? Fair, your gran is a big old witch. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, a mentor for advice. Um, I do have a few friends that have already sort of explored um, witchcraft, um, especially um, a young lady who I met ages ago. Uh, I don't. I'm not going to say her name because I don't. I don't. I don't know if she'd like it. But uh, I recently reached out and was like, "Hi, I'm doing witchcraft," and she was like, "Oh my god, that's amazing! Just remember to do these sort of things." So I don't really have a mentor. I just kind of have friends that I've reached out to and go, "Am I doing this right?" And they're all going, "Yeah, you're doing a great job." So <laughs> maybe it would be quite cool. To have a bit of a mentor, so yeah. We get lots of people telling, giving us information of where you can get other books from uh, and stuff, which is great mm. as well. I just can't. I mean, a lot of a lot of books you could probably find online. I know that there is um, a beginner's guide to witchcraft um, that looks really really cool. So well, it's something you might be able to, 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 to look at, and this is probably what a lot of people think, and it's good to dispel the myth. Is witchcraft connected to Satanism? No, that is not. Um, now, this goes, uh, lots of people um, think that witchcraft is, re is related to Satanism, um, but no, it is not. We, as a, as a craft, I should say, we represent nature. We want to fulfil the earth with positivity. Uh, I mean, certain, certain witches do. I know that there are others who practice sort of like more dark magic, um, but there is no, no, there is no witch that I know of through the internet, through friends that has ever turned around and um, openly said that they support Satan or they worship Satan. Not saying that they aren't, there aren't witches out there, um, but no, I, there is no point where I'd be uh, start talking about the devil and uh, wanting to have little contracts by him. That'd be a bit weird. Well, um, I love cats. One thousand and seven. Uh, has just basically you've inspired her to look into witchcraft and crystals. crystals for oh, that's years. awesome! We can learn together. Yay! You're making witchy friends. <laughs> um, no, honestly, it's 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 kind of fulfilling, especially when we're in a situation that we can't 
we can't really do anything about apart from do our place and kind of stay at home um, and especially if you're able to go out and do your one walk a day and you might come across um, a certain type of stone that you like or you might come across something that gives you a sign uh, a lot of people talking about signs about how um, things can just float and float float down for example this little feather over here found this found this feather over here that came out of nowhere love that thought it was marvelous um, and a lot of people can take signs for beginning witchcraft you have your yeah ma has her feather as well i found it today yeah it's the tiniest little thing and it was in the seat of my car oh fantastic so i've just been i've just kept it in my top pocket and it's a nice white feather as well for all our paranormal people out there as well yeah which i believe means that people from the other side are, are looking down on us and thinking about us and sending I've not got a feather. Well, I'll give you one tonight. Fantastic. Oh, stop it! Disgusting! You You're vile. Feather. You are vile. You I are know. vile. Now, before you go, are you going to give people something to... Um, go away with. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is one thing that I wanted to tell you guys to talk about um, how to have a really good night's sleep. Um, it's worked for me. Um, and I've practiced it, which is really, really good. So um, see, see, if it, see if it happens with you. If you struggle with negative dreams, negative thoughts, or you just can't sleep, give this a go, um, which is when you are about to go to bed, um, try and have a nice warm drink before you do. So you're all cozy, getting your favorite pajamas, relax, whatever. Um, and when you're in bed and you feel like you're a bit sleepy, not really ready to go to sleep yet, relax your entire body, feel like you're melting into your duvet, and try and imagine your entire body being filled with positivity and warmth and happiness, uh, soothing and slowly count down from 13 to one. Um, and by that, that should, if you try and stay positive and happiness uh, and happy throughout that, you should have a very good night's sleep. So yeah. Brilliant, yeah. I shall do that tonight. Uh, are you going to do a spell for next week and get the ingredients? Oh yes, that sounds like a plan. Um, yes, actually, let me see. Now I'm going to be doing the thing that I did over here, which is my little concoction to protect your home. Um, so if you want to join me for that, I do have a few ingredients. If you don't want to, you know, grab any, it's very, very simple, you probably already have them. But um, if you don't want to join in, that's fine. You can just come along and watch, watch me fanny around. Um, let me have a look at the ingredients for it and then we shall here we go um so what you'll need for next week if you want to join on in um is incense and if you don't have that candles okay you'll need two eggs but only the shells so maybe you can have eggs for breakfast and save the shells for later um you'll need basil um cinnamon uh, a glass jar or something to hold um, a concoction in, uh, you know, something that can be sealed as well. Um, and a candle for wax to seal um, your jar. So, um, yeah, no, if you want to join in for next week for uh, Witchcraft Wednesday, which is quite exciting, then we will be making that to protect your home and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So join in to make this with me, protect your home from negativity. And yeah, I shall leave it at that. Oh. Just to say a quick hi, to, you've got Christine uh, listening or watching all the way from Australia. Oh wow, hello Christine from Australia. I would say what I would say down under, but I can't really do an Australian accent. So thank you very much for watching. Um, but yeah. Rosalind, um, she just said uh, she's a witch. Uh, she's been uh, uh, with her for five years now. Oh, wow. She's still learning, so it's a long process. Oh, God, gotcha, yeah. Also, somebody else is asking, Jim Monkey says, can you post the ingredients on the page, please? Of course I can. I will post it all over my social media and I'll put it on the Most Haunted official page. What is your social media? Oh, my social media. Yes, my social media is, for Twitter, it's Mary underscore BT. Um, and then my Facebook is just Mary and then the letters are M-H-E after that. Um, and Instagram is Mary M B T. And if you didn't get all of that, just refresh the video when you want to add me on there. So yeah, if you want to, you don't have to. Um, so yeah, it'll be 9 p.m. next week. It's gonna be 9 p.m. every single Wednesday, hopefully. So yeah. And Nicole from Texas has joined too, has been, oh. been listening. Oh, wow. Hello, Nicole from, from Texas. Um, I feel so loved from all around the world. Linda Shelley, so any particular incense? White sage or patchouli? It can be any incense, any incense at all. Um, something positive. Uh, lavender's always good. 
see if you have any lavender incense, but it can be anything, anything at all. This so is just, a really, really simple spell, so you don't need any particular candle or anything like that. So just go through it very, uh, ingredients again for next week. Okay, so ingredients again for next week. Eggshells. Incense, any incense. Two eggshells, so as in two eggs broken up, not like two halves, um, only the shells. Um, basil, um, you're only gonna need a pinch of these, by the way, uh, the pinch of basil, a pinch of cinnamon, something to hold, so like a jar or something like that, and a candle, the color of the candle does not matter. As you can see, I chose white for mine because that's just all around awesome. So yeah, oh my God, Perry is watching from Hawaii. Wow, <laughs> that's so awesome. Hello, Perry from Hawaii. Um, but uh, if there's, if there's, if if the questions have uh, have chilled out a little bit, I think it might be time for us to disappear. There, there's lots of questions, but I think there are lots of questions that you've kind of already answered. Some yeah. people have okay. Sort of late, so um... from Kirsty from Vancouver. Wow, thank you. And from Jamila Jackson from Jamaica. Oh, wow, there's so many people. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for joining. It's been really wonderful. I wasn't Lynn expecting... From Chicago. I wasn't expecting so many people to join in. And thank you for um, everybody who's not just from England as well. It's really lovely. Um, Arizona. So Arizona, Arizona they're all... Holland, <laughs> Cornwall, <laughs> Jersey. Everyone's coming in. Yeah. Before, before, you know... Sheffield. Uh, Sheffield. <laughs> Newcastle. Stoke-on-Trent. Um, but uh, no, thank you so much. And um, I shall see you all next week at nine o'clock, Wednesday. And uh, prepare to make some spells for me, so that'd be amazing. And as they say, blessed be. And I shall see you all next week. So goodbye. And I shall turn it off. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye.